And once again, these zombies just snuck up out of nowhere. <laughs> Get down the tunnel in that little little smaller tunnel down there. It's like, what the hell? <laughs> These zombies turn. They, like, they got their ninja skills from the dinosaurs in the, like the later Jurassic Park movies. Another fun fact: that zombie biting Kaplan's leg is actually Jimmy Bolt's girlfriend. So, his sister, his girlfriend. You'll see his mum soon. So let's see. Rain was bitten by that one zombie, the lady zombie. She was bitten by Jeremy Bolt zombie. She was bitten by a random zombie a second ago, and then also bitten by fucking JD zombie. How is she not dead yet? <laughs> How is she not turned into a zombie? Taste, don't you? Like the taste of that? <laughs> what is Spence doing? He's got his fist up, like, I'll hit you. <laughs> what the fuck? Kaplan? Just stay there. Hold on. Hold on. We're going to come get you. We need to cut this wire, then we throw it to him. Wait, what's your plan? To cut the wire and throw it to him, and then what? He's going to fucking Tarzan his way across the fucking tunnel? What? I, oh, man. <laughs> oh, Lord. She, that, I think that would be more likely to get him killed, Alice. First, you you already know you, you already know your detective skills from spotting some blood, some blood, but not much. <laughs> and now you're like saying you should throw the the wire to him, and then we'll swing across. Like, oh, Alice, <laughs> you're a good fighter. I can tell. I'll give you that. You're not quite a genius though. <laughs> I like that one zombie. Just like, hey, come on, man, don't throw that shit at me. I don't think yelling is going to make him leave any faster there, there Kaplan. Yeah, I, I don't like that. I'm not okay with that at all. That they show, they show, cut to Alice's face as he hears the gunshot. And you come back to Kaplan and really it's like, oh, he didn't kill himself. It's like... Yeah, that would have been better if you saved it for later in the film, where you see what happened. Hell, you could have even did it in flashback. That could have even been a flashback scene when you see that. You know, but instead they revealed it here, and now it's like, well, we know he's alive, so he's going to do something to help the heroes in the end, right? <laughs> so, I don't know. That's kind of a... Even, I think, Michelle Rodriguez and Mila Jovovich called him on this in the DVD commentary, and he kind of jokingly brushed it off, and I was just like, yeah, but no, seriously, why did you... Why did you do it that way? Does it doesn't make much sense? Now that's not as quite as scary as it was in the game, but I'm almost certain that was taken from Re the original Resident Evil Two, mainly original, obviously, because you know the remake didn't come out yet. But um, it was taken from Resident Evil Two, I think, where the clicker crawls across the window. You know, when you're when you're walking into that one room in the police station. And I feel like that was more scarier in the original than it was not only in this movie, but in the remake. In the remake, even, they kind of made a big noises and everything. Whereas in the original, like, it made barely any noise. And it's like, crawling across, you see this thing crawl across the window, like, what the hell was that? You know, it was a little more frightening there than it was in, in the... It was a little more frightening in the original than in the, in the remake, oddly enough. Even though the remake is kind of... Does give you some pretty decent scares in there. When I get out of here, I think I'm gonna get laid. A line so nice they use it twice in the fucking end credits. When I get out of here, I think I'm gonna get laid. And probably the probably one of her best lines in the movie. Just out of nowhere, it's just like, yeah, I think I'm gonna get laid, dude. <laughs> After all this is over. Yeah, <laughs> you might want to clean up. Ah, forget all that. She'll t someone will take her as is. <laughs> They'll take her exactly as the way she is. Half dead and pale and vomiting. This is probably one of my favorite shots in the movie because it's with one shot, but they did it like about a bunch of different times. Uh, they filmed it like about like five or six different times. They had to get the the, the good uh, laboratory, the clean, make it clean. They had to get Alice, you know, in the shot. And again, one with the people walking by. Or it had to do it in different ways and different times. I don't think this is CGI or green screen because I, I believe at least this is this is Paul Anderson saying by by the way that this is all how he did it. I don't think this is green screen because this doesn't look very green screenish. So 
Because usually green screen is pretty obvious. But it's I don't think it's that. So, it, But it is a pretty nice shot. Um, I'm not sure how Alice is remembering this. Because I don't know. Was Alice down here? I don't, I don't remember. I don't remember that being a, a thing that said in this movie at all. But the fact that this shot is, is like the best shot, one of the best shots in the series, because it gets far blander from this point forward. <laughs> like from Resident Evil uh, One onward, the shots in this movie, this camera work in this movie gets in this series gets worse and fucking worse every time, especially in Apocalypse, especially Apocalypse and the final chapter. Where it's like it, the editing on those movies and the camera work on top of it, it's like, wow, this is terrible. <laughs> but um, I remember the old days, you know, the oldie days of two thousand two when they actually put effort into the, you know, into the movies they're making. See, this is proof that Umbrella is evil. They're, they're stabbing bunnies with needles. I'm still wondering how they did that shot without stabbing their actual rabbit because it looks like they're actually injecting the rabbit with the, with the needle with the syringe there. That looks pretty. That looks pretty fucked up. The virus screen for the antivirus. Kind of an odd shot there, where she like turns around in one frame and turns around in the next frame. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa what's happening? <laughs> it's, it's weird. I don't know. If that was meant to be stylistic choice, or it was a continuity or error, editing error. I don't know. I'm gonna go with editing error because there, there's no stylistic choice for that. That's just like, stupid and, and overall. But um, it doesn't kill the rest of the shot, you know that the previous shot, but the, you know the her seeing the hive or remembering the hive, you know being better, looking better and all that. But it's it still was kind of a strange editing choice. There's a cure. You're gonna be okay. I was beginning to worry. See lines like that make me wish Rain had stick around, had stuck around for the other movies. You know she will be back in ex in Retribution. As a civilian clone and as a soldier, a commando clone, so she will be back in a dual role for the next movie, for the next like, two movies, three movies later. So she'll she'll be back, but I wish she stuck around for this franchise. I actually prefer her over Alice. Alice, at a certain point, just became like, you know, she became this hardened character. Then she became this more desperate kind of broken character, where she was like. Um, She's looking for this this island or whatever. Alaska. She's looking for this place in Alaska, which turned out to be an umbrella trap in an afterlife. It turned out the Umbrella Corporation was trapping people. It would have been nice if they had, you know, stuck to their guns on that instead of just... Whatever. And then by after in afterlife onward, she was just she was just like, lull, killing zombies. You know, OMG zombie killing, lull. <laughs> it's like, fucking hell. <laughs> um, but Michelle Rodriguez was the only character I consistently liked in these movies. As far as, like, in Resident Evil 1, I liked her. I liked her a lot in Retribution. I will say she's also the MVP of that movie, but it's between her and maybe Kevin Durant as Barry Burton. Not because he's Barry Burton, um, but because I like Kevin Durant and, and, as that character in any way. Like, if you told me, if you didn't tell me that was Barry Burton, I'd be like, yeah, I, I, still, I like that character, so... But it's Barry Burton, and he looks way younger than he than Barry does in the game, which is kind of funny. Um, then you got Luther Rain, no Luther Luther West. Luther Reigns was a wrestler, by the way. <laughs> Luther West, I like his character in Afterlife and Retribution. Um, they made the terrible mistake of killing him off. Why? <laughs> like they killed off one of the best characters, the only one of the only likable and relatable characters. Um. But yeah, uh, Michelle Rodriguez should have stuck around between in Afterlife. I think she should have replaced Alice, as a matter of fact, in after in, uh, Apocalypse, Extinction, Afterlife, Retribution, and Final Chapter. But you know, nepotism wins the day. <laughs> Put your hands off her titties, please. Slightly interesting idea to have Spence get a gain and regain his memory. Uh, we see things through his eyes. We find out he's the one who did everything. Um, I'm not sure why Alice got her memory back at the same time. <laughs> Seems kind of convenient. <laughs> hey, we both got our memories back at the same time. By the way, I just noticed she calls him Spence. We never once hear her name in the movie. We see her name in the credits, but we never hear Alice's name said in the movie. So I think that's kind of interesting. An interesting thing to think about. And there goes that handwriting error I was talking about earlier. 
like I, again, like I said, they could have at least had him write the note first and then use that prop for Alice's scene at the beginning of the movie, but it's obvious that's not what they did. <laughs> Otherwise, I don't know why, but the handwriting is completely different. And there goes that other continuity I was talking about, the fact that he's not wearing a mask like he was in the earlier scene at the beginning. You know, it's all coming full circle. It's all come full circle here. All the continuity errors have been <laughs> brought to light here. Please, I wouldn't want to shoot you. I might need the bullets. Back off. I swear Eric Namius has some of the funniest looking faces in his movie. <laughs> I, he's just got, I mean, I'm, I don't want to knock the guy, but he seems like a good, decent actor. But, my God, his, his faces he makes are just, like, so chuckle-inducing. <laughs> just, like, immediately, like, like, I can think of, like, nine faces he makes in this movie that just kill me every time I see it. Where? Where is the antivirus? It's on the train. Where you found me? So the antivirus is on the train where they found him and these commandos or any, no one else thought to search this train beforehand. <laughs> no one thought about searching the train before you, whatever. <laughs> How did they not see <laughs> or even look in the room where he was in? <laughs> Cause if you, if I, I just remembered when he goes into the train station later, he, the, the, Duffel bag with the virus and stuff is just sitting in in the drain on the on the outside the drain. I was like, how did no one see that at all? Once again, I still don't know why Anna Bolt is still in the water there. <laughs> well, like I said, two other zombies that were there, they moved on. You know, one was in the in the dining hall B, the other was in the tunnels. She's still here for some reason, I, and then she decided now to get up for the sake of the plot because the plot said so. The script says she had to get up now and actually be active for once. And then now she does. It's like, yikes, that's great. That's just kind of dumb to me. I feel like they did so so they can give expense an excuse to try to use the, the cure. The T-Virus cure or something. But that could have worked either way if you had him go to the train. You know, him have him check out the T-Virus sample, see if everything is okay. And then the liquor comes in and kills him, which will happen anyway. The liquor comes in and kills him while he's checking that shit out. Like, it, that could have worked without, you know, the zombie bite, him wasting time here with this. It, it, it didn't matter. It didn't, it was unnecessary to just do that. This is just me, though. It just felt like, ah, see, he gets his come up and it's like, no, no, he will later in like another f four seconds. He will be, he will get his comeuppance. I feel like Spence is supposed to be the Wesker substitute in this movie. You know, and I, it is a, I feel like a lot of these characters are the substitute of something. Uh, in this film, you know, you got Alice could be like the Jill substitute. I guess Matt could be the Chris Redfield substitute. I don't know. Uh, you already have a medic, which could have been Rebecca. I guess one, uh, Colin Salmon's character, I guess could have been a Barry substitute. I don't know. I feel like Rain is more like Richard Aiken from the first game because Richard Aiken was severely injured in that game as well. And just like she is in here. Although I don't think he was bitten nearly as many times as she has in this in this in the story, but I feel like these characters kind of are supposed to be like the substitute of other characters in the game or something. Because this is straight up Wesker's story in Resident Evil One, the, the, the game. You know, he was he was this guy who uh, who was supposed to be infiltrating this facility. He betrayed the team like ha like towards the end of the fucking story, at the end of the game, and and the Get Resident Evil's case, and in this case towards the end of the movie, we're like almost twenty minutes to to the end of this movie. So yeah, he's he's kind of like the Wesker, I guess, substitute. I guess he this is definitely a Wesker thing, you know, or or a, I guess a reference of some sort to Wesker in the first game because he that's the same thing happened here. Although I don't know why he doesn't kill these people. <laughs> He's like, I might need the bullets. Like, well, you clearly might not. <laughs> you know, like, you just shoot them all and make sure they don't leave and we'll keep it moving, <laughs> you know? Also, I love the fact that the Red Queen is kind of like, oh, well, I can't let y'all leave because... Because you're going to hear it later. She says, I can't let you leave because one of you is infected. But she lets Spence leave. But then there's some shit that happens later on. You're going to see in a minute. 
where she says, I've been a bad, bad girl or whatever. And I'm like, what does that mean? And apparently she it's insinuating that she led the, the liquor to, to Spence. And I'm like, how, how did you, how did you do that? How did you manage to lead the, the, the liquor to the, it, it kind of reminds me of what they, what they were doing in Resident Evil Retribution, where she actually, the Red Queen in that movie actually controls the monsters or, or, or something. Like she actually dis- de- deploys monsters to come after the heroes. And I'm just like, that sounds stupid, <laughs> but it's not, it's, it's, it's not as bad here, but it's even worse in Retribution. Like that was so re- retarded. It was not even funny. Your boyfriend's a real asshole. And yet another Michelle Rodriguez line that only Michelle Rodriguez can pull off. Um, this it's one. I think there's a couple more after this before the the train scene. But this, you know, she she should have stayed around. I really wish she had been more in more of these movies. Aside from like the brief part she was in Retribution, like that was pretty stupid anyway. But. I wish they when I say she, I wish she would come back or stick around, I mean as herself and she lived in this movie, not bring her back as like two other clones, which made no fucking sense to me at all. <laughs> well, I'll get to that when we get to that movie. Uh, fuck me, I I, I can't wait. <laughs> I can't believe that son of a bitch is gonna get away with this. I don't think so. I've been a bad, bad girl. So according to Mila Jovovich, this line sounded a lot more sexual than it, it was intended to sound when they had an American girl do this voice. Apparently, the Red Queen was supposed to be voiced by an American child, and it sounded way too sexual when she said that part. Of, at least when she said that part. So I guess they went with the British girl, and I... It doesn't sound much different, but I, I really am like, what... Did they go full cuties with, with that line originally? <laughs> what what, is, what do they mean by it sounded way too sexual? There's actually a joke in the commentary about how good um, James Purefoy is with that needle and the tying off and shit. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. He does look pretty good at that shit. Like, he knew exactly what he was doing. He didn't need any sort of help with it. Yeah, his CGI is not as well. <laughs> Props to them for recreate trying to recreate the Resident Evil 2 where they had the liquor on the ceiling and... Leon and Claire is, like, scared of it, you know, depending. I feel like the original handled that better than the remake, honestly. Although the remake did it a little different, I think. Maybe I'm wrong. I think the remake did it a little bit differently where they had the liquor on the ceiling. That actually scared the shit out of me. I don't know if it's in my playthrough of Resident Evil 2 yet, but I had I had, um, I had footage. And I'm not sure if it's still around yet because my old footage is getting messed up and my laptop's fucked up. But I had footage of me playing Resident Evil 2 and that scene where the liquor is like on the ceiling in that um, hallway with the stars offices, and then the liquor just swipes up a body, it scared the shit out of me. <laughs> but um, yeah, the CGI in this liquor doesn't look very good uh, compared to like nowadays or even the, the same year. The same year we got Gallo, and he looks phenomenal, you know. And I get it; they were on a budget and stuff like that. The problem with these Resident Evil movies is that the monsters are not very scary. You know, like the liquor, the dogs, the ty- uh, the tyrant. You'll see um, the executioners, the, uh, the super liquor from Resident Evil and Retribution, the big winged monster. I forgot the name of it. It was in Resident Evil Five, but it's in the final chapter. It's like a big flying creature. I forgot the name of it. But yeah, those characters are like not scary in these movies. Granted, some of them are not scary in the games as well. Like the executioner isn't very scary to me. Because the execution is a big hulking brute just swinging an axe at you, um, but the liquors in five were pretty, were pretty scary because you gotta sneak around them and you gotta do. In fact, they they do that. In, they recreate that in Resident Evil Two, so the, the remake. So that's fine. Um, but yeah, I feel like they should have put more effort in making these monsters scary. Because I should have been terrified of the nemesis in Resident Evil Apocalypse, but I wasn't. And what's so funny is that. The Resident Evil remake is the inverse of the originals. Because in the, in the remakes of 2 and 3, I was terrified of Mr. X. And I had no and I like had no fear of the nemesis at all. Whereas Resident Evil re- originals of 2 and 3, I had no real fear of the, ne- of the tyrant. I was like, I think it was one part where I was like, oh shit. 
I think it was when he was in that room with you when he's walking in on the camera. You see him on the camera screen and he walks towards the camera and he breaks the camera. I was like, oh shit, he's in this room, isn't he? He's in this fucking room. That is the only part that made me I had my anxiety up a little bit. But Nemesis was like a nightmare, a literal nightmare. Like I had actual nightmares about that character. I look at him in Apocalypse and he's all pathetic. It's like this is not this is not good. You know? And I appreciate them for using uh um prosthetics and using making it more practical. I appreciate that. I am very much dreading what they're gonna do with him in the reboots of Resident Evil. <laughs> Cause I heard with the, the, the reboot they're gonna like try to be more close to the game and you know me. If it's gonna be close to the game, it's likely gonna be worse than the one that wasn't close to the game. So I don't know how you can get any worse than Resident Evil the final chapter, but I'm sure they'll try. You know, like I said, I'll even give you another I said about that I said this about Doom earlier. I'll give you another example. Street Fighter. 94. Not accurate to the game in any way. Raul Julia. I love Raul Julia. I love Ming Nan Wen. And that's about out. Oh, Aaron, Aaron, Aaron Stravoski. I forgot his name is. Um, he plays Zangi from the movie. I liked him a lot. He's very funny. And Miguel something. I forgot the actor's name, but he was, plays DJ. Love them all. But the movie was bad, and the movie was completely inaccurate to the source material in, in, in every way. Legend of Chun-Li, more accurate. It was even worse. <laughs> so, there you go. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I um, kind of wish they'd make the liquor, the monsters in these movies, all six movies, not just this particular one. The only monsters in these movies that are pretty scary are the zombies. Because the concept of zombies, these mindless, shambling, flesh-eating monsters coming to kill you, or even run at you, depending on... Because I think they started doing running zombies since 28 Days Later. When 28 Days Later hit, you know, then they started doing the running zombies. Like that movie, uh, Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead. Uh, Resident Evil Extinction finally brought them in. Uh, I think Resident Evil has the credit of being the first zombie horror movie. A first big zombie horror movie in like years. and like years at the time. And, and it's not good. You know, neither is Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead. I think between the movies I just mentioned, Dawn of the 28 Days Later is probably the best thing we've gotten from that. But, uh, I don't know. I mean, if the zombies, if the human monsters are scarier than your bigger monsters, kind of a problem? Because I feel like the liquors and Nemesis and all that should be, the dogs should be scarier than the zombies. Like, there's, the bigger the threat, the scarier it should be. And I feel like they kind of dropped the ball in that. Because in the games, the, the liquors are fucking terrifying, mostly. <laughs> like in Resident Evil 2. They're pretty terrifying in that game. You know, they're more sc- they're a lot scarier than the zombies. Here in the movies, it's like, oh, I'll need the zombies, you know. <laughs> but it's whatever, you know. I, I, I at least appreciate them at this point right now for trying to recreate the, the ceiling scene from Resident Evil 2. I'll give them props for that. Oh my god. <laughs> 